questions 64 and 65. So it's about dental cements. And so here's a little uh, nod to future dentists who are sitting Gamsat. Uh, coming from Acer, a little shout out for you. Anyway, so um, talks about different ions, uh, divalent and uh, trivalent. Of course, monovalent would be, for example, one plus or one minus, as the uh, you would see in the group one metals. So uh, in the periodic table, so that would be things like. Um, lithium, potassium, sodium in group one, you're expected to be familiar with that. And then in group two, uh, you would have plus two. And so um, things like calcium and magnesium, which is already mentioned. And then you have the transition metals. And then in those transition metals, there could be plus two or plus three. So divalent or trivalent, very common, like zinc being divalent. And as mentioned in the passage, aluminum being uh, trivalent. And then you can have uh, anions with charges that are minus one, uh, that would be monovalent, and uh, minus two, which would be divalent and trivalent and so on, like phosphate uh, is famously uh, tri trivalent. And of course, Acer is using the letter M to represent metals and the letter A to represent anions. And they give an example here but we're going to discuss that just a little bit later. But first, we'll talk about hydration. We're told that hydration is um, a ratio of the non-evaporable water to the evaporable water. So uh, just put non-evap over evap, and then we're giving a graph, and guess what? Acer puts evap over non-evap in the <laughs> So the, the graph is built in the opposite way of the actual ratio. Uh, Acer, why do you love opposites so much? Will you tell us one day? Anyway, so what can we learn from the histograms? Notice that the histograms start, the very first one in all the four different trials starts off with no non-evap and then non-evap starts getting more so there's an increase in non-evap so non-evap starts up at zero so the first one has the least hydration and then non-evap ends up going up higher so therefore the last histograms have the most hydration so it goes from least to most in each instance with the different material that's being used so we'll have to keep that in mind Okay, so question 64. The question is asking for dental cement with a trivalent metal, so that's a metal that's going to be trivalent, and with a divalent anion, divalent anion. So this is what we're going to uh, try to figure out. But first of all, let's go back to the example that Acer provided. Acer provided an example with a metal ion that was divalent, and a anion that was also divalent. So, and this produced MA. So Acer showed us that that produced the dental cement MA. But look, the charges are equal to each other. So the charges are equal and it makes MA and this is neutral. That's fine. If we were to add these together, just as they are, we'd end up with plus one over here. It doesn't work. We need to make sure that this is going to be neutral on the left side, and then this is going to be neutral. Now, I know some of you have already memorized what to do here, something called a drop and swap. And that means when you, when you have uh, anions and cations together to see what they can form together, you take the superscript and you drop it to the other side, and you take this superscript, you drop it to the other side, and so you'll have M2, A3, which is answer choice A. But, you know, if you drop and swap, okay, you might get one question right from a GAMSAT in two or three years of sitting GAMSAT. But if you think about the reasoning, you can get far more questions correct. So the reasoning has to do with neutrality on both sides. So you can pause this video and see what would you do in order to make sure that both sides would be neutral. 
So hopefully you would look at the stoichiometry and you would say that the only way to get this to balance out is if I multiplied this by the number 2 and then I multiplied this by the number 3 and then the overall charge would be plus 6, minus 6, 0 and that would equal the charge here which is neutral. So now the only thing I have to do is deal with the subscripts on this side in order to balance now the number of moles. Because I, I, I have the charge balanced, but now I don't have the moles balanced. So then what I would need to do is I, I would put a 2 over here because there's two m's and there's three a's, so I need to put a 3 there. And now the charges are balanced and the number of moles are balanced. And now we have an answer choice used by the type of reasoning the ACER would expect that you would do. So that would be 64, the answer is A. Question 65. So what is true? <laughs> so the answer choice S is the weakest cement. Okay, so now we're going to look at what is the weakest cement. So we look at the compressive strength, and whatever has the least strength is weakest. That's what the implication is. So the least strength is weakest and then we look at the numbers and the the set of graphs that have the lowest strength is the second set of graphs which is zinc polycarboxylate. And so those set of graphs are definitely uh, the weakest. So now let's see if those are the most hydrated. Keeping in mind that most hydrated is non-evap over evap and non-evap is the white part of the graph or the lower part of the graph. Well, of all the graphs, the one with the smallest percentage of non-evap is definitely <laughs> zinc polycarboxylate. So it's not true that it's the most hydrated, actually it's the least hydrated. And uh, if you're a dentist, or <laughs> you would have uh, laughed at these questions because they would be so easy. So anyway, 65, um, answer choice B. So the hydration of cements increases with age. So let's look at the age. The age we're going to have to measure in time, of course, because that's age. And the ones, uh, and we see that each time, each graph represents another point in time that is longer and longer. And we've already established that the hydration increases in age. We noticed that within a four uh, histograms, it goes from least to most hydration, and so indeed hydration increases with age, and so answer choice B is correct. But just to check, uh, zinc cements are more hydrated than glass ionomers. Well, first of all, even if you compared the zinc phosphate with glass ionomer, just eyeballing it, you can see that it's not true to say that it's the most hydrated. And th the fact is, though, that zinc cements also include zinc polycarboxylate, which we've already established is the least of the hydrated forms. So um, answer choice C is incorrect for more than one reason. And then as hydration increases, the compressive strength of the cement decreases. As you can actually see the compressive strength increasing below each of uh, the set of histograms. So this is a question where a little bit of chemistry could help. <laughs> you know, often it's, it's just math. But here you can go to uh, Chem 5.2, 5.31 to 5.35. Uh, that uh, has some uh, solubility information, which is, uh, can be helpful and then GAMSAP Math and Biology Chapter 0.